Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and what is kind of another patron request, sort of? It wasn't specifically for this ship, but uh, yeah, my patrons liked the idea of me doing older mid-tier ships and this certainly fits that bill and one of them was specifically talking about Italian battleships and that's, this definitely fits that bill, so yeah. Giulio Cesare was uh, regarded, widely regarded, and rightly so, as, as quite a beast when it first came out. And if there's any ship in the game that uh, maybe, well, uh, I was going to say the, the, the legendary Type 59 from World of Tanks, which sort of became mediocre over the years, but maybe the Belfast would be a, a closer fit for the legend of the, the type even though the type isn't that uh, that, that grand anymore. But, uh, yeah, they, it got me thinking, maybe this falls into that same category of something that was extremely good when it came out, but, you know, does it hold up now? One way in which it definitely doesn't is going to be AA, because, of course, when it first came out, this was still very firmly back in the RTS era, and this actually used to have pretty capable AA for its tier, although... Um, it's fairly short range, but it does a be it does a better job than a lot of the Italian battleships, even the higher tier ones. Uh, even the tier eight carriers only got like three point five. The uh, the Aquila. So yeah, uh, we'll just have a quick look at captain skills as well because I forgot to do that last time. This is Sansonetti, uh, fully maxed out. Uh, nothing too wacky except maybe for Brisk. I can't remember why I put Brisk on instead of like Vigilance. You don't really need Grease the Gears for the Italian battleships, but Vigilance might actually have been a more useful one. But anyway, I'm not spending the doubloons to respec him just now. Uh, and actually, on this particular ship, the concealment is half decent, so uh, we might get to make some use of it. We may even be able to touch 30 knots. Who knows? So, bottom tier game. There's one sub per team. No CVs to worry about. And it's actually another... GC on the same team, so I don't know. Maybe we'll be Italian battleship buddies. It's probably a, an important thing for me to note that you can't actually buy this ship anymore, but I think there are still uh, events where you can get it out of containers. I don't know if it's a super container ship, but uh, yeah, sadly it's not one that you can buy anymore, and that was for a really long time the case with the Type 59 as well. They, they kind of really hyped it up on its reputation and it wasn't necessarily that it was a fantastic tank anymore. It was just the, uh, the, uh, the, the reputation it had from uh, back in its heyday. And given that this came out nearly six years ago, or, well, five, five and a bit years. It's like five years and a couple of months. I don't think it's even over five and a half. So nearly six is definitely uh, overstating it. But... Uh, yeah, uh, you know, the, the, the landscape, the seascape, whatever you want to call it, has changed a bit since then, definitely. So it, it's it's one of those ones where maybe they could bring it back and sell it as a tier 5, but they don't want to because its reputation is such that it's more valuable to them to hold on to it, to uh, dangle as a thing that, you know, you can get from special events or containers or whatever. So there we go, with Brisk we are in fact breaking 31 knots. That's with the Sierra Mike flag as well, of course. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's actually a pretty good speed for a tier 5 battleship. I think this is maybe not quite as fast as Congo with the same setup, but Congo is definitely not as stealthy, so Brisk isn't going to be nearly as useful a skill. Uh, probably the other notable thing about this is that as it came out so long before the other Italian battleships, you have both HE and AP, so no SAP. And uh, that, that's both a good thing and a bad thing. These are still fairly small caliber guns. I won't bother you with the history. There's, there's some good, like, Drakinefell videos and other uh, history videos and articles on whatever about the, the refitting of these ships. And... Uh, one of the things they did, I mean, the, 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 the reason why it's a bit of a funny caliber of 320 millimeters is purely because rather than stick new guns on them, they actually re-bored the existing barrels 
from uh, was it 305? So basically, as as much as they thought they could get away with without substantially weakening the barrels. Right there we go. That's a that's a nasty hit on that Miyoko. That Miyoko is not feeling happy right now. Well, granted, it was a reasonably broadside Miyoko, but um, yeah, these guns are uh, against broadside ships. I guess still pretty effective. Well, there's an enemy sub, and oh boy. Okay, we have we have a super short range air strike. Okay. Okay, that might be a problem when there's a sub in the game. But uh you know, hopefully there's other people around. Like that Nagato. Oh, who's uh Oh, um Uh well bye bye Nagato. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Broadside in the Nagato is not a good idea, especially. Uh, who do we want to go for? Uh, well, I guess we go for the thing that we can still see. Right, hello Caracciolo. You can overmatch me, although this of course does have that funny bow armour. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Right, you are still not close enough. Oh well, are you hoping I'll give a bit of... Oh, that's not what I wanted to see. Hello Akatsuki, right, you have fired. And that was not an efficient way of cycling my guns, but there's an Akatsuki right up in my face. And I don't want none of that. I was not expecting that. So, uh... Yeah, uh, that's that's not so nice. Uh, I do have Caracciolo uh, with the reload skill. Oh, you shot your bolt early in terms of torpedoes. Well, that's good for me. So yeah, the, the rear turrets. Uh, like that's a good skill for Italian battleships generally. Uh, just because it uh, uh, is uh, it, it, it's a useful one. Just because you have to. Uh, at least I do find myself switching fairly often between the AP and the uh, SAP. Right, I don't think my secondaries are going to finish this guy off. No, okay. So with Caracciolo we do get that nice boost to our main battery range. The Caracciolo... Uh, not Caracciolo. <laughs> Uh, oh, the, yeah, anyway, the Caraccio is the ship, not the captain. Sansonetti is the captain. Uh, yeah, the uh, Caraccio has been completely ignoring me. And I'm not sure why. Uh, but I won't complain about it. They could have absolutely overmatched me. It's the fire going to get... Oh, it's my fire that got them. Very nice. Right, okay. That could have been considerably worse. That... Destroyer popping up unexpectedly was uh, an unwelcome surprise, but they they shot their bolt much too early in terms of dropping the torpedoes. So that turned out to be not really a problem, and the Caracciolo basically fully ignored me. And I don't know why. I don't even know why they pushed up quite that far around that corner when they knew there was going to be a whole bunch of enemy ships to meet them in the face. That was not a good plan. So, yeah, the destroyer went way too deep, and uh, so did the Caracciolo, I guess. They put themselves in a position where they had absolutely no chance of withdrawing, and they were going to be uh, horribly outnumbered. That's never a good plan. It's always good to have a escape plan. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you absolutely can't make a getaway. Okay, that's their Gneiser now down on the other flank. And um, ours is still there, but they still also have a fair few ships, including the T-22. The T-22 in the right hands can be uh, pretty dangerous. Absolutely be pretty dangerous. Oh, all of the broadsiding ships. Uh, yeah. I mean, this has turned out to be a bit of a shooting gallery. Uh, I don't know what really what there is to say about this other than can I have more enemy teams like this please? <laughs> this has been a weird game, hasn't it? 
This has been a weird game. Okay, so, uh, we could chase the New York. But I don't know if they're gonna... Let's go this way. They still destroy it ahead of us somewhere. Although they're not currently surfaced. Or maybe they are surfaced but behind an island, I don't know. I may get a chance to shoot at this New York as well. New Max is good health, that for attackers not looking so healthy. There, go, there goes the New York. Actually being charged down by the other Julio Cesare. Oh yeah, okay, the other the, the, the subs engaging the other the other GC. Uh, although I don't know that I'd be getting that close to show broadside to uh, <laughs> Yeah Yeah to a New Mexico at point blank range. I mean, it's a bit shotgunny, but it's 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 more risk than I'd be willing to take at that range, unless there was literally no other choice. Okay, now we get to have fun with the submarine. Hooray! There's not really anything I can do about it except charge towards them and try and duke. Okay, you're not dumping all your torps out at once, and that was only one ping. I don't know if that was just like their rear tube or I'm not sure what was going on there. Okay, there's the sub. I don't know why I'm... <laughs> I don't know, that's a very old habit. This is definitely not a secondary spec Sansonetti. Okay. Two torps is fine. Actually, we might even be able to juke those. Alright, we're gonna take those two, but that's okay. And we do have all of our heals. Torps all missed, but this New Mexico. Yeah, we should keep our angle and then finish them off, and that's all fine. Right, you naughty little submarine, where are you? Yeah, there's not much you can do about people dropping torps like that. It's really only the fact that I just have the health to tank it. Like, there's, there's nothing else I can do here, really. Just keep them spotted and try and whittle them down. It's probably the most frustrating thing about playing mid-tier battleships these days, especially if you're on a slower one. You know, this one at least has the speed. But if you're in something like New Mexico, or um, even like Mutsu, Queen Elizabeth, you know, the sort of 25 knot ones, there's nothing you can do. They can just sit well out of range and... Uh, you know, it's it's a lot harder to dodge those torpedoes when your best speed is 21 knots. And even the slow US battle wagons don't... Like, once upon a time, if they'd, if they'd kept their energy retention in turns, if they'd had that still as, uh, uh, you know, a unique thing, uh, they at least would have uh, had a, a better chance of um, maybe juking and not, like, losing all your speed, but... Uh, no. It just makes life a bit miserable if you're in a situation where there's a, a destroyer that can pick on you. There's certain mid-tier ships that I just don't want to play anymore because the risk of meeting submarines is, is too great. And if you put your player in a situation where they're overriding, like that, their feeling is just frustration, that they just can't do anything about the situation they've been put in because the the sort of the the deck is stacked against them essentially. Um, yeah, if you if you put them in a no-win situation, that's just bad game design. 
So, yeah. You'd think the slower ships would have longer uh, airdrops, uh, airdrop uh, depth charges to compensate, but that definitely is not always the case. In fact, that's quite often far from the case. I mean, hell, Musashi still only gets, like, was it six kilometres? There's even more reason to backline in your Mus Musashi just because if you're not backlining your Musashi and you encounter a submarine, then good luck! Anyway, this is the last couple of enemy ships. Uh, I'm even maybe in line for a... Maybe I should be going for the for attacker. Maybe in line for a, a, a Kraken here, that would be nice. I mean, this is one game, sure, but uh, maybe this ship is exactly as OP as it always was. You do have guns, you know, Jaguar. There we go, quite good ones. Right, I think my chances are better if I go for the for attacker, but you never know. I don't think my turrets are... Oh, there you are. I thought you were going to... <laughs> no, I oh, was me thinking, no, they, they, might, they might try and get some sneaky shots off or something, but... Uh... <laughs> well, there it is, Kraken. <laughs> I mean... I definitely could manage 100k with other tier 5 battleships, but... Uh, I don't know, this just had extra things going for it. This was just a wacky game, though. This was a really weird game. I don't know what to make of that. Now I've said that, what, what other tier 5 battleships would I absolutely... I like Viribus Unitis, actually. That's, that's the other premium that's got kick-ass guns, but it's a f far weaker ship in terms of, you know, like its, its health pool and its armour. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, let's give that another go. Why am I doing this with the... I don't know. I was trying to think of Tier 5 battleships. There are other ones that I do like, like New York, for instance. Another one with weak armour, but uh, you can do pretty decent amounts of damage, and it's got great range. And uh, Ashing Court can be quite fun. Koenig used to be really fun as well, but uh, they nerfed it. This is going back a long, long time ago five, six, seven years ago. It was a bit too good for a while. People gave you broadside, it didn't matter that you had smaller caliber guns, you could just paddle them so hard. So it took a minute or two, but it's found us another game, this time top tier. One destroyer and a carrier. I actually took the opportunity to uh, do a quick look up of the stats because I couldn't remember what the sigma value of the guns is and apparently it's 1.9 so <laughs> yeah okay yeah that's really very good for a tier 5 battleship I'd forgotten it was quite that good so 10, 10 guns even though they're small caliber 10 guns with 1.9 sigma plus this rather trollish armor Maybe this is still every bit as good as it ever was. If they were going to re-release this, it would have to be one of those copy-paste versions with different stats or a different historical loadout. Much like they did with Belfast. But even then, if they did, it would have SAP instead of high explosives, so it wouldn't be quite the same thing. I'm sort of remembering <laughs> kind of why I don't play this uh, very much or why I stopped playing it because uh, yeah it's one of those ships where you can end up feeling a bit dirty and that last game with the Kraken I'm starting to remember why it feels a bit dirty. Right Murmansk that would be another good candidate for a video actually. That's another old school mid tier premium. 
with its uh, absurdly good AP shells. It is, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a bit broken if you get the chance to hit the cruiser's broadside and you're close enough range. They still have the US shell arcs, but uh, yeah, they have a much higher crop value than the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Omaha and the Marblehead and any of the other US 6-inch guns. If you get yourself stuck on the border like that though, um, yeah, you still basically have Omaha armour. And I don't know if they're built for stealth, if I managed to actually uh, spot them. Right, it's the Molka. That's the other thing that was, I think, maybe aiming at me. Yeah, there's a slight fail div going on in this game. But, you know, I guess we'll get to see how I do versus a Molka and a Vondertan. I don't want uh, that guy to feel like I'm persecuting him too much, it's just I know it's a dangerous cruiser. But there are other things that are rather closer. I may need to turn around. Svetlana does have torpedoes, if I remember correctly. Kind of short ranged, but torpedoes nonetheless. That used to be one before the uh, the captain skill rework. That used to be one where you could take the one thirty mil guns, stick on AFT, uh, and actually have a reasonably good time. But yeah, that and the Krajny Krim. With its also 130 mil guns. Uh, yeah, they just took a huge nerf to their potential range and never got anything back as compensation, sadly. But I've complained about the Krajny Krim many a time before, so I won't. I won't bother you with that again. <laughs> Haggis Killer. Spot the Scot, maybe. Right, I'm soaking up quite a lot of attention here. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if you told me I'd be getting into a secondary duel with a Vondertan I, uh, earlier, I, I don't think I would have quite believed you, but... Uh, yeah, now I'm the one that's finding the border to bump into. Right, we've got to kill the Vondertan. Right, Svetlana is actually the same hull as um, as the uh, uh, Krasny Krim, so it has got pretty trollish nose armor. Oh, hello, Durflinger. Oh, that was a good hit. 10k. I possibly charge in a bit gung ho here, considering the fact that I have not a lot of backup, but I might still get to live. Guess we'll see. I do still have all my heals. There's an Iron Duke back there somewhere as well. Yeah, there's the Svetlana's Torps. Oh, can we avoid them? Yes, we can. No, oh, I'm getting so many other beds. I'm going to go for HE. HE might be better against this Svetlana. <laughs> yeah, this has just been, I don't know, a pair of wacky fights. The other game was wacky, this game is wacky. I don't know what to tell you. 
Apparently mid tiers is just wacky. When I try and play this ship. Can't really tell what's happening elsewhere. Nobody actually has a cap yet, but we seem to have lost far more ships. Oh, and I have the only kill so far. Okay. That's never the best sign. Right, come on, 300 odd. There we go. Hello, Congo. Nice to have some help. Well, having said that, the Königsberg has been helping out a bit. <laughs> what a wacky game! What an absolutely wacky game. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Hey, at least there's no subs for me to worry about this time. Right, I, I might still be better off with a HE, maybe? Not sure. Some nice deck pens. <laughs> Over a million potential already. I guess the fact I got focused so heavily has been quite good news for our Königsberg. And there's the Iron Duke. Yeah, they're going to be a bit of a pain. One of the other reasons I don't like playing mid tiers that much. British HE slinging battleships, the Orion and the Iron Duke. Just an absolute pain to fight against. And really, even if you're playing it, you know, even when I'm playing it, you still end up reaching for the HE when you think this is dirty because uh, well, the AP is just so bad on the tier 4 and the tier 5. So you want to feel like your shells are doing something, so of course you reach for the HE. So I don't even really blame people for it, it's just Wargaming's bad design in that case. Although the KGV at tier 7 is, is sort of deadlier for its tier. And then of course you have the Conqueror. But at least you can hurt the Conqueror more effectively these days. That did not used to be the case. Yes, hello, I'm on fire. You get to do big chunks of damage and set me on fire. Yes, yes. Right, I think I might need that 1.9 Sigma right now. So I kind of wish I'd managed to finish off that Murmansk. We probably could have used the points. Well, I am taking some good chunks off here, but he might well just burn me out. Like he's just, This guy's not even trying to angle or anything. Oh well, <laughs> I was still going to breach 100k damage. But uh, alas, I don't think it's going to be a win. Is it going to set a fire? Yeah, it's going to set a fire. Oh, I haven't had a single Citadel, which is a little... little disappointing, but never mind. Should be able to finish off that. Murmansk, there we go. Not long until I can get a heal. Fire is still going. He may actually just be able to finish me off. Oh, he's firing AP! Oh my god, what? That's not allowed, that's cheating! <laughs> oh well. Yeah, see, that's the case where they didn't even have to play well, they just had to be in an Iron Duke. Because poor design is poor design, I guess. Anyway, 100k still. 
Uh, but in this case, yeah, the enemy team was just, like, better. So, that was that. This Iron Duke st should still go down, at least. Or not. <laughs> oh, well, we'll skip ahead to the score screen. We know how this one's going to end. So, there we are. Nearly 110k. Uh... <laughs> It, it was a mid-tier game. It was kind of wacky. Uh, the enemy New York's did very well. I mean, that's what I was saying. You know, New York's guns can actually be very, very good. It's just New York itself is a bit of a struggle to keep alive. So, uh, does it hold up? Does its reputation uh, of being a bit OP still hold true? Uh, yeah, I think so. 1.9 Sigma, tier 5, 10 guns, troll armor, pretty good speeds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I think absolutely this reserve that deserves its reputation still. So, with that bit of uh, shocking revelation, I guess, we'll end the video there. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can do all the usual things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.